What's up guys? Hope you guys are having a great day as always. Today we're gonna be talking about recursion. But yeah, what I'll cover for today is like, what is recursion? How to make a recursive function? And then I'll do a code implementation in Python as well. If you do know recursion pretty well, I suggest that you watch the tail recursion part as well because it'll help you a lot more. We're gonna be talking about tail recursion now. So mainly recursion optimization. And if you're not really familiar with recursion or this is your first time watching this video, I recommend learning recursion a lot better before you start doing this. But if you do have a good understanding of it, feel free to go ahead. So we're gonna be talking about how to make this recursion even faster. Now let's use that factorial example we used in the code implementation. So we have our base case right here, we have our recursive call, and we have this third part where we work towards the base case because n is getting smaller and smaller. Now, even though it's a valid function, it's not very optimal. Let's do a basic example of factorial five. From that first function, we know that it's gonna be five times factorial four. Then this breaks down to five times four times factorial three. And then we're gonna have five times four times three times factorial two. Eventually we get something like this. So you're gonna see that all the multiplication actually happens after the last recursive call. So we have to compute again on the way back, which is super annoying. And you're probably wondering why doesn't the computer just calculate five and four in the beginning and then five, four and three, and then so on and so on. So that way you'd only have to multiply it by the last recursive call and then you can just return that right away. You don't have to do all this computation on the way down. It doesn't really work like that because every function calls onto a new stack, which has its own variables. So in the first example, when we call factorial four, that goes onto its own stack. So even though I put in the same line, what we're really looking at is five times a new stack opens, and then we do four times factorial three. And then factorial three opens a new stack. So what we're really multiplying is by three times two times one. So I separate into function calls. So you're gonna see that each block right here is only gonna have those values. So in this block, you're not gonna be able to access two or three or anything like that because it's not in that block. Because think about it, when you're calling factorial one, the function itself has no idea what you called before it. All it knows is the argument that you gave, which is one. When this is returned back into that last function, we're gonna have two times one, so just two. That's gonna be returned to this, which is gonna be six because two times three is six. Then we multiply that into four, so it's, we get 24 here. And then finally over here, we're gonna have five times 24, which is 120. So we do all these calls and we can only do the computation at the end after the recursive call. Although it's still fast because our computer's really fast, we can make this a lot more optimal. We gotta come up with a way where five can be carried with us to this new stack and then multiply those two to get 20 and then 20 gets carried here and then those get multiplied 60 gets carried here and then those two get multiplied and then we can just do one times 120 and return that just by itself so we need to modify the function to have another argument to save this accumulator that we're creating this value that we're carrying is called the accumulator so what we want to do is pass in another argument for this accumulator so we can multiply it right away and then just return that without having to multiply again and again and again. So I'm making a new function called factorial t, a helper function. t is short for a tail of recursion. And I have this other parameter here. I'm gonna call that acc for accumulator. So let's write our function. Now that we have an accumulator, you're gonna see that when we return, in the other case, what we did was we just returned one. But now we're just gonna return the accumulator because you know at the first call, for example, it would be one. It would just return one. Now let's talk about the return part. So it's still gonna be factorial t, we still need that recursive call, but we have two arguments now. So n, like last time we're gonna do n minus one, and this time for the accumulator, what we're gonna do is return accumulator times n. You may not see why, but let's just, let's just do factorial. So we're gonna copy that exact function and we're just gonna do factorial t of five and one. So since we didn't hit the base case yet, what we're gonna do is call factorial t again, but with n minus one, so five minus one, and accumulator is gonna be one times five now. So this is gonna be your call. And we didn't hit our base case yet, so we make another recursive call, four, four minus one, and now we're gonna take that accumulator and we're gonna multiply it by n, so four. So this is gonna be three, and then this is gonna be 20. 
uh, this becomes 2 and this becomes 20 times 3 which is just 60. We're going to call factorial t one last time because n is still 2 but in this next case it's going to be 1 and then we're going to do 60 times n which is 2 in this case so it's going to be 120 and since n is 1 we said that if n is less than or equal to 1 we return the accumulator now so our accumulator is just going to be 120 so we return 120 and we can return 120 without having to multiply anything else because everything's been multiplied by the accumulator just like that and that's how you do a tail recursion you create an accumulator and that way when you return something you don't have to do a computation with that recursive call so let's look at a leak code question that's kind of a perfect example of this that's so called the nth term Tribonacci number so Tribonacci is a lot like Fibonacci but instead you're going to use these three values so you're going to have 0 1 1 and then your next term is going to be the sum of those last three values and n is greater than or equal to zero so the given example here where n is equal to four and then they say that t of three is going to be zero plus one plus one which is equal to two and then t of four is going to be one plus one plus two is equal to four so if you want to think of the sequence it's going to be like zero one one as your base case and then next is going to be two and then it's going to be four and then the next value is going to be one plus two plus four so seven and then the next value is going to be 2 plus 4 plus 7 because you take the three terms now. So 2 plus 4 plus 7 is going to be 6 plus 7, which is 13, and so on and so on. So this is how I defined it recursively. These are my base cases. In this case. And now I need my recursive call. So I'm going to return with Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus n minus 2 and n minus 3. So another reason it's not really optimal is because you're making three recursive calls at once. Sorry, this has to be one, not two. And you're going to see that it works for these small cases. But let's try the biggest value, which is 37 in this case. So let's try 37 and see if it still works, which is the max that this is ever going to test out. But it's a bigger number now. So let's see even if it even finishes in time. And as you can see, time limit exceeded because it's way too slow. So this is my tail recursion implementation of it. I have an accumulator now. And the accumulator is going to be an array of three terms now. And uh, I'm not going to really go in depth into it, but I want you to try to figure it out yourself what I really do here. But our base case now is going to be we're calling Turbinacci T and, and we need that new accumulator, which is going to be the first three base cases. So this is tail recursive. And let's try it out for these three test cases. And as you can see, it worked really fast, even though it took very long re regular recursively with tail recursion, you can optimize it to work a lot faster. Finally, as a bonus, let's do no recursion. So this is using a loop and it's working just like that tail recursion and it's using an accumulator right here. So, but this time it's, it's less function calls because there's no recursion. So let's try that out and see what happens. So let's do an R for non-recursive and run it again. And it works for all cases and the time is significantly faster because you're not really doing any function calls. So this was my solution with tail recursion. It beats 33% of submissions and uh, memory is also pretty good too because it beats like almost 70%. If we look at the, if we look at the loop that we use, it beats 93%, but it uses a lot more memory than other submissions. And uh, you can use recursion or loops for many different things, but it all really depends on what you're doing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll put all these solutions in the link below. If you did find this helpful, please subscribe or comment down below what you want to see next. Have a great day guys, bye.